Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode, another fine episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I could say it will be a fine episode because I've already gotten a chance to get to know my guest today, Anna uh, Vosnaya. Am I saying that right? Vosnaya. And she's an absolute delight. Uh, we should watch some stories about how we how people learn to listen to their bodies and how people begin to understand their minds. And let me tell you, she's fantastic. And I am pleased to get to introduce her to you today. Let me introduce you a little more with a little more detail with more than 14 years of managerial and business achievements in the informational technology field. Anna is an entrepreneurial neuro coach. We're going to talk about that term here in a second who's passionate about seeing the beauty of personal and business growth. Her goal is to have top managers and business owners serve their missions while staying healthy and also serving their own well-being. Anna, I've already said so. I'll say it again. I'll probably say it one more time. It is a delight to meet you and to know you and to talk to you today. Mutual thing, Kevin. Hello, everyone. Let's let's go back, not to the beginning, beginning, because that we don't have that kind of time, but let's go back to your your beginnings, your origin story as a coach. How did you how did you come to decide or come to discover that coaching was really the way that you wanted to to impact the world? And how did that roll into the current coaching practice you have today? Mm -hmm. That's an excellent question, because I was looking something to focus all my activities like uh, I've been writing, I've been mm -hmm. dealing with people, I've been uh, learning, studying, uh, educating myself with my own coaches, with my own mentors and through different kind of education. Um, I was curious, I was always curious how, about brain and how it works and how to apply neuroscience to informational technology, even though uh, I deal with software services provided in healthcare area, which is related, but not that directly to neuroscience. So out of curiosity, I've been dealing with um, science as it is and with people. And uh, at some point, I just figured that it's uh, well integrated organically during certain coaching sessions mm, that were just applicable based on my managerial background in uh, informational technology area. And I started uh, figuring how do I bring more value into that with all my knowledge, all my interest and excitement and the organic experience that I just got. And I started mm -hmm. growing. And I started educating myself in a more narrow area in neuroscience specifically. And uh, neuro coaching, well, first of all, it's excellent tool, I would say. And on top of coaching practices, it provides a number of uh, algorithms, um, well, um, practices, I would say, that uh, every person um, can use with coach and, of course, without coach by mm -hmm. digestion of uh, the whole point of operating with your whole body, your nervous system, your hormones, and uh, your brain as a result, and your mind also, mm -hmm. um, in the most efficient way possible. Mm -hmm. Because like we spoke just a little, uh, our bodies have it all, know it all, we just need to use them properly for our own benefits, and uh, probably uh, don't damage them. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how it just happened, you see. And I do believe that uh, if something's happening organically, easily, with excitement and mutual benefit, if there is more than one side uh, involved, then mm -hmm. that's exactly what um, a person should do for own development and for bringing certain benefits to others. Uh, this interaction, uh, it's always growing us two sides. And uh, from one standpoint, I grow my professionalism out of my own curiosity and without, within certain educational process. But every client in this coaching um, brings certain personal stories, background, context. And it's up to me as a coach to choose what's going to be applicable to this very person what's going to benefit uh, him or her and uh, um, my personal goal is to um, teach them teach these people 
because uh, I'm not a coach in their pocket. I'm willing to create a product that's going to be like, yeah, coach in your pocket, uh, meaning certain tools that you can just use in whatever stressful situation um, that is happening just right now and you kind of cannot uh, approach your coach for help or certain decisions need to be made just right now and you're not in that well state of mind to actually mm -hmm. make it you're out of time so my point is to um grow uh, okay align rows of these people to uh, <laughs> Uh, to their own um, like improvement mm -hmm. and probably um, for their um, natural uh, abilities to not have any impediments to being closed, something mm -hmm. like that. Probably that's been complicated, but I do believe that uh, bottom level, these are easy things. Just let's live our lives being aligned with our very selves. How? With coaching tools. Um, how else? With near coaching tools. Mm -hmm. It really is. Once you once you discover it and understand it and lay it out, it is very simple. But there is that, that difficulty of discovery. And as you were talking, I was thinking about how so many of us, at least at some point in our lives, and some of us still today, sort of think of our bodies as just black boxes where stuff goes in, stuff comes out, but we really don't know what's going on in there. And we have a hard time listening to our body or understanding our body or understanding the way that our, our biology moves through this world. Um, and that can, that scares people. Sometimes they don't want to think about it. Sometimes they, they feel things or hear things or get signals from their body. They don't know how to interpret. And I love, I love your, your focused approach using that sort of neuroscience and coaching blend as a neuro coach. Um, to help people to not just guide people with your own coaching when you're there, because like you were saying, you can't just be there with them all the time, um, but also equipping them with the right tools that will help them to continue on their journey of discovery, learning better and more how to listen to their body and listen to what their body and their mind are, is saying and how to, you know, in, 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 in a certain way of speaking, live better with themselves I like that you use the term uh, alignment to live more in alignment with themselves. I feel like that's really crucial. And that begins by understanding and listening to who you are, what your biology is saying, what your body is saying, and having some help with that interpretation. Yep. And make sure that stress, certain other impediments are not showstoppers. And since uh, uh, my clients are mostly either business owners or top managers of certain organizations, their level of stress is high and mm -hmm. their decision making is important and it has number of consequences they gotta deal with so my point is to also grow their personalities again like have them aligned with their own personalities being resilient mm -hmm. not blindly not in ignorance but truly honestly because um there is huge power in this honesty with your very self and so immediately your resilience to stress increase, plus the uh, quality of decision making and I would say uh, response time um, is tremendously better, mm -hmm. which benefits business as a whole, which benefits organization and other people, these clients of mine are responsible for. This is mm -hmm. excellent, I think. And um, on top of that, I would add that um, we shouldn't prevent ourselves on this path. Um, mm. Because uh, um, if um, certain algorithms, certain tools uh, on how to deal with my very self are digested already, that means nothing but next challenge. Mm. And I want mm. myself and these people to have next challenges. I don't want myself or them to be in the loop, you know, dealing with all the same situations or all the same like problematic cases or trauma or things that keep using their own resources of their own bodies subconsciously. Mm. I don't want them to be um, like spent to that, to this loop rather than to go for the next challenge. I want them to be willing to go for them. I'm willing to go for the next challenge. <laughs> and when I'm like, I, are you okay? Maybe you calm down just a little. Then my answer is like, either I'm going for that 
or life's gonna push me there. And <laughs> usually mm -hmm. those pushes are not very pleasant. So I prefer <laughs> to be nicely growing by my own, with my own coaches, for example, to um, become like living, to start living like wider life, more bright life, to try different uh, colors of it, to like play different instruments in this whole orchestra. Um, mm -hmm. As a minimum, that's interesting, I would say. Yeah. I oh, know I love I love I love that analogy so much because yeah there's I you know, I love the music and I love the dance and also it's just it's really fun to learn more even if I'll never be virtu virtuosic you know I'll never be able to play an instrument with with the greatest of ability it's just so much there's so much joy in the discovery of making music on something in a new way as opposed to just playing the same old tunes you know playing the same old anxiety loops or stress loops or keep on bumping into the same you know team building problems in a company kind of bringing things back into the into the into the business environment there's and i, I really i really 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 love that you that you hit home very hard on the word resilience and really kind of you really kind of help define it because it's a word that gets tossed around a lot that people acknowledge how important it is but they don't necessarily understand exactly what that looks like for them and I love that you had resilience in the context of moving forward, that ability to move forward to the next challenge and not mm -hmm. stay in those loops, whether they're harmful or maybe they're maybe they're neutral, however you interpret them. Moving forward, that is how you gain the greatest kind of resilience and the kind of resilience, like you said, that spreads out from you. It spreads to your team, to your clients to everybody you work with and for, to your family, to your friends. It radiates out from you into everyone else in your life that you touch. And then that mm -hmm. continues as you commit yourself to pressing forward and moving forward and finding that next instrument, you know, that that new that new music, that next dance. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that even sounds great, actually. But another <laughs> cool thing that uh, Neira coaching brings, uh, it increases Neira persistence. Neuroplasticity is the ability to digest new information and for the brain to actually rewire itself. So previous mm -hmm. experiences, whatever they were, and maybe they might not be, might might have not be that um well pleasant. Um, neuroplasticity allows to digest new things in a way um, that your brain's capacity improves and grows as well. So for example, apart from making your business, you can also play certain instruments and you can have all the well power, right? And uh, not saying about time also for that. And I think that allows uh, to actually increase capacity of the whole life. So you could mm -hmm. do more things for your very self, um, not necessarily for growth only, but uh, for having fun also, because uh, uh, usually a uh, uh, very narrow um, focused brain um, that spends certain resources for previous experiences that are not over and they influence our now without even our um, like being being aware of that um, mm -hmm. is that we cannot um, have certain power for new things. And this is the same loop. So neuroplasticity grows this ability to increase our capacity for more of our fun. How about that? Mm -hmm. It's and it's it's something that I feel like a lot of people don't. They maybe don't believe it's possible. Like people tend to think of certain things as very fixed, like the way that they think, the way they feel, the way they interact with the world. It's like certain things about themselves that to them just just they feel like they're just they are what they are. And I think we like largely as as a, as a, as the human race, we sell ourselves short on exactly how how elastic and changeable and available to grow we still are. And this is this is why I love the neuro coach approach, um, is because it's like it, this isn't just like talking it out. This isn't just like interpersonal development. There is science behind this. There are ways to approach this that are empirical and proven. And there we're only learning more every day as we go as we go forward. And I find that that hybriding that or that hybridization, that bringing together of the the interpersonal development, the conversations and the concepts and the the exposure to new ideas and new ways of thinking and being and feeling paired with. And here's what this looks like from the science perspective. This is what's happening in your brain. This is what's happening in your body. Here's how we can begin the work 
to make it something different, to open yourself up to new possibilities, new opportunities, not just as a concept, but as a practical, actionable series of tools applied, steps taken, and you know, new new horizons discovered. I, I get I get very passionate about it as I'm speaking about it because I'm just like it's so there's so much promise and potential in the work. For sure, that's why I'm yeah. in. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's why you're in. That's why you're doing what you're doing and why you love what you're doing. <laughs> And um, um, that's all right. Plus, uh, it's getting familiar to your very self oh, again, again, and again in new mm -hmm. circumstances. Because even if, for example, we prevent our own growth for whatever reason, uh, the world uh, the world doesn't stop, right? It keeps going. Mm -hmm. So life creates certain circumstances, new ones, more tough, more challenging, more interesting maybe, and that uh, influence our personality, influence our, uh, well, um, adaptive skills, right? And if uh, there is not enough of those, or again, not enough of neuroplasticity to actually deal with that, then uh, I do believe that quality of life at minimum is gonna be not that high, and we cannot avoid changing surrounding how unless we're somewhere in the mountains becoming wild or something, but still <laughs> there are changing of seasons, right? <laughs> and speaking of um, getting connected to ourselves, uh, it's a lot about getting connected to nature, to natural cycles also. Um, but probably the first step towards that, whether you live uh, in a big city, smaller city, village, but still just don't ignore what's going on, right? So usually uh, it's like logic to uh, um, put um, some clothes on if there's cold in winter, but whether we feel that or we just check in our phone that it's minus three degrees and probably we should do something about it. But do we <laughs> feel that? Do we feel that we're tired, hungry? Do we feel like uh, on our highest um, abilities for a certain job to be done right now? Or maybe we're not that creative now. And can we do something about it? Or we should just go and have some rest finally when we want that and really need that, but um, like not when we're exhausted till the level that we have to. And mm -hmm. my point to actually, again, be aligned with those natural cycles that vary from person to person, but still, um, near a scientific point is to understand those cycles. And uh, um, day by day, they're not the same. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, like, let's uh, um, figure that we separate at least uh, cold, hunger, and these kind of things, and really meaningfully fill it through. But then, what, like at certain time, I'm more effective rather than another time. How to determine that? How to increase my own harmonized cocktail to, for mm -hmm. example, get this interview done? Um, maybe I want to sleep or something. How to increase this excitement? How to manage our very self towards our goal? but not uh, in a pushy way, not um, uh, through some mm. willpower that is never like endless. Mm. How to be natural with that? All these questions um, are a matter of our sessions and miracle. My goodness. I, I'm looking up at the Zoom clock and I'm realizing that we've already been chatting for, for almost 30 minutes and I, I have so many follow-up questions and continuing questions. It's It's just fascinating to me endlessly. So I'm... I'm probably going to hassle you to have you back on. So just so selfishly, I can continue talking with you about this stuff. But if someone has any questions about what you do, neuro coaching, what your approach is, what you have available, your tools, your coaching, everything in between, where can people just get to know more about you, find out more about you and the work that you're doing? And where can people best connect with you if they want to start a conversation and maybe start a relationship? Honestly, Calendly link, 15 mm. minute intro call is best. Because yeah. there is a lot and every person has different contexts. So my point is to create this um, unique connection with mm. a person um, and afterwards we'll figure the rest out. That's pretty much how it works every time, isn't it? I mean, we might we might dress it up a little bit differently or explain it differently, but really, yeah, it's every connection is unique. Let's start, the sooner you start the conversation, the sooner you start that journey. And that's, exactly. it's simple. There's a lot to it and some, you know, it might be challenging, but it's pretty simple. 
<laughs> it is. That's why I'm growing my own capacity, you know, because there is more and more people and I kind of need to go with that. But I love it, actually. And that stimulates myself to be able to give more. That's mm. what I'm doing. Ah, that's lovely. That, that's the perfect note to end on. How passion begetting passion and service begetting service and on and on and on for the rest of our lives, if we're lucky. <laughs> um, Anna, thank you. I mean, selfishly, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm so delighted to know you and to have met you. And thank you for being on the podcast and sharing a little bit of what you do with me. Um, and yeah, I'm definitely going to have you back on to keep this going because I feel like we're just scratching the surface. <laughs> My pleasure. Let's continue. Excellent. And to the audience out there, you know what to do. I'll have links in the show notes to like how to find out more about Anna. I'll, have, I'll put a link to her Calendly down there too. If you want to start that conversation, if you're ready now, please, by all means, do so. And here, we will get a chance to talk to you again very, very soon. Even.